So welcome everyone and thank you for joining Kubernetes on the Edge Day live in Chicago. I'm Steve Wong. I'm going to skip a bio because uh, I've only got 10 minutes and I'll invite you to judge me by what I have to say rather than my bio. You can, but you can read where I'm from on the screen. Uh, you saw the official theme when you registered for this event. Some impressive numbers here. Edge compute, four times larger than cloud, generating 75% of data worldwide. In marketing, forecasts like these are called a pitch deck. If this is what got your boss to okay coming here to this event, that's, that's great. But let's be skeptics today and question the likely growth in Edge as a thought exercise. Why will Edge be generating and handling 75% of all data? Why will people decide to increase investments in Edge compute? Let me outline a few technology shifts taking place and lay out an idea on what these could lead to. Then you can decide for yourself whether that growth forecast is real. There are five significant changes going on right now. Uh, some things on this list help with remote management of edge workloads at locations with limited physical security and limited or no staff. And for greenfield missions, new chips reach into places you couldn't go before with connectivity going increasingly wireless. So we're seeing needs for better energy efficiency and data access governance as well. The world is using approaches like GitOps and device twins to manage edge at scale. And of course, the elephant in the room is AI. ChatGPT recently woke the world up as to the potential of AI. It learns from text and generates uh, the generative part of its description means that it generates text. But chat is not the only application for AI, and a central public cloud is not the only place where this will be useful. Data is being generated in manufacturing, retail, and utilities, and we have affordable AI technologies to act on this data. A recent survey indicated that at Edge, generative AI is only 6% of the machine learning tasks that uh, people are looking into. These are examples of popular uh, edge AI use cases. Um, you can look at this list and it's quite likely you'll have a few more that uh, aren't included here. The majority of data already comes from edge, not cloud, and it's growing because of cheaper and better sensors, cameras, and uh, cheaper and better wireless connectivity. Do you want to move all of this growing data up to the cloud? In a blog post earlier this year, a former founding engineer of Google's big query dropped the line, big data is dead. It talks about data sovereignty and privacy challenges, along with a reevaluation of whether hosting a central ocean of data delivered value to those who amassed it. Spoiler alert, if you read this, the answer was no. It's like bringing home a puppy. It has a long-term cost. The savings aren't just in cloud storage. Moving data incurs latency, resiliency, capital expense, and energy costs. And every transit point can uh, give hackers another bite at the apple. AI at Edge can be used to reduce the content to actionable events and summaries. Uh, excuse me just a minute. This Coral USB TPU and the wireless um, SOC in this picture are just a few examples of inexpensive hardware accelerators for Edge AI. Uh, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. Essentially all the vendors of chips, uh, hardware chips for Edge are uh, embedding uh, machine learning acceleration. On the software front, the Frigate NVR project um, and the upcoming Sony Minicura Wedge uh, project are some examples of open source software in this space. Uh, don't get me wrong, this is new stuff and it's changing rapidly, but the opportunity is huge. Uh, the devices aren't multi-million dollar quantum computers, uh, so you might want to start looking at this now. 
uh, taking into account uh, risks in terms of what kinds of things you might want to do as prototype use cases and uh, avenues for proofs of concept. Uh, predictive maintenance is an example of something where if it isn't perfect, the downside is that maybe it predicted that you needed a, you know, an oil change or a bearing replacement earlier than you actually need to, needed, to, needed to, and if the AI was wrong, it isn't the end of the world. So you can find things to use for proof of concept now. Um, AI is gonna bring about mass uncertainties and risks for those in competitive businesses that get caught unprepared. Every business is going to change whether we like it or not. AI will alter your career maybe sooner than you think. Now, AI is not going to replace engineers, but I contend that engineers who know how to deploy AI are going to replace those who don't. If you want to use AI at Edge, there's more to it than just buying some chips. You're going to need tools for deployment, updates, security, connectivity, and more. This stuff is available, and that's what we're going to talk about today at this Kubernetes on the Edge Day event. Here are the sessions this morning. Uh, please take a look at this list. We're gonna be doing four 25-minute sessions covering foundations uh, like Kubernetes, Service Mesh, uh, and then look at uh, trends drilling down into device management, web assembly, machine learning. Then after a brief break, uh, we'll move on to visit a couple studies that look at lessons learned and best practices. Finally, we're going to close with some lightning talks on taking advantage of wireless technology and a use case that's very interesting from the Boston Children's Hospital. Um, there are also about seven edge talks in the made KubeCon event later in the week. We had some of these, like particularly the AI talks that were deemed by the KubeCon event as being particularly interesting to the general public. So speakers applied for this event, but they ended up getting shifted into the main KubeCon event. So I'd encourage you to go search the schedule for the word edge and you'll find uh, edge related talks later in the week. Finally, at the end of the day, Tina is going to come up and uh, follow up with a talk about how we can take advantage of the community along with new technology to make the world a, a better place. Uh, AI tech can be an intellectual force multiplier, just like the steam engine and electricity were uh, years ago. Uh, but suppose that we could have proved the efficiency of a manufacturing or transportation operation by just 2%. These are the kinds of advances that can save resources and improve quality of environment, elevating the standard of living and quality of life for all. So that means that this is a critical time to come together to listen and learn from each other and explore this together. To get the most out of this event, I suggest that you go beyond passive listening and take advantage of the hallway track, uh, meeting with other attendees during the lunch that occurs after this event, and we'll carry forward on this as a group activity on, in, in the spirit of open source software communities. Um, finally, this event is subsidized by event sponsors that help cover the budget, so I wanna quickly recognize their support. Thank you, Spectral Cloud, for being a diamond sponsor. Thank you, Edge Genesis. Uh, and thank you, audience, for coming today. Uh, you can get my deck at this link right now.